All right, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I do mean over-the-top beautiful day, here in paradise in the collapse of global industrial civilization here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. In New York, baby, it is uh, Thursday, May 19th, 2022. And of course, the wind is coming up right when I'm starting this uh, video, but I'm plowing ahead. And hopefully this won't be too much of a problem on the microphone, enjoying the sound of the birds. So anyway, uh, I don't think I've done an oilprice.com roundup. Uh, in a couple of weeks, so we all know what is the number one topic of concern for at least Americans today, and that is the price not so much of oil but of gas. Of gasoline, baby. I broke a new record today $88.24. A new record. It is, gas is $4.79 here in the Finger Lakes of New York today. So a new record, 88.24, and the fellow next to me, the, uh, this dude, he's, he's a well driller for folks around here. You know, just a small town businessman drilling wells, I mean water wells. He figured 300 to 350 dollars. So we're going to uh, look at a few stories about the price of gas. Some interesting, uh, the price of gas, the supply of gasoline. I need to keep saying gasoline. Uh, we're not going to talk about natural gas today. But before we get into uh, the price of a gallon of gasoline, just, uh, I'm just going to, uh, we're going to go over to Japan just for a moment and look at what is going on in Fukushima, Japan this week. And, uh, all right, if I can get this. Japan nuclear regulator green lights radioactive water release from Fukushima. And there you go. Uh, the Japanese Nuclear Regulatory Authority has given its initial approval to TEPCO to start releasing irradiated water from the Fukushima plant that collapsed during a massive earthquake and tsunami in 2011. Plans were revealed last year to pour the water from Fukushima into the sea after an assessment that would check whether there were any safety issues with such a plan. According to the Nuclear Regulatory Authority, there are none. And there you go. There are no safety issues with the plan to start dumping millions of gallons of irradiated water into the Pacific Ocean. And guys, uh, I think I'm probably taking Book Hermit's view on this one. I sort of agree with them. Uh, for all of these doomsday prophets talking about how this release of this water, I don't know, is going to poison all of the fish in the Pacific Ocean and whatnot. Uh, that's a lot of alarmist BS. What this is, is like so many other things, it is one more little drip, drip, drip. It is one more little tightening of the noose. It's just one more ingredient in the toxic stew that is going to uh, eventually take down this planet, of course. Uh, but anyway, I'm not here to talk about Fukushima. I just wanted to let you know 
that uh, if you are one of these Fukushima alarmists, you have something to be alarmed about. I, like 99% uh, of Americans, are more concerned about the price of a gallon of gas than I am uh, about millions of gallons of irradiated water being dumped into the Pacific Ocean. And then right now I'm more concerned about this wind on the microphone. We're going to move the stage. You need to go get that chippy. And we're going to let that little dog. Why don't we move around here while we uh, see if we can block some of this uh, wind noise on the microphone. All right. Sancho Ponza is going to go get him a chippy. All right, now, how does this look? So what this is, is looking out over my creek. It bugs in a jar over towards the garden. Where I have been working on the garden for some reason all day today. Out there digging in the dirt while I still can. All right, is that a little more protected from the, uh, from the winds that blow? All right, now we can get down to what we're here to talk about, and that is the price of gas. There's all sorts of uh, angles to take on this, and here is one that I don't know if I am misreading this. I want to I want to hear someone uh, l letting me know how are you guys reading this. I I thought now I admit I'm not paying that much attention. To that little scuffle over there in Ukraine, but I thought there were some kind of sanctions and that the U.S. was not buying Russian fossil fuel products. I thought, uh, we are buying them. Oh, we are buying their fossil fuels. Okay, well, That's what I, saw, anyway. I, I was just corrected. I, I thought all of these sanctions that there were, so I, I thought the reason that the price of a gallon of gas was supposedly that, uh, but I've just been corrected. So I, anyway, th this is th this is how uh, oilprice.com uh, is, kidding. okay. First, they have this story. Russia increasingly using its own oil tankers to boost shipments to Asia. Russia's state-owned oil producers Rosneft and Gazprom have started to use tankers of local and state tanker operators Snoa Float to ship their crude oil to Asia, Bloomberg reported on Wednesday. Um, many Western countries and companies are not risking touching Russia-linked crude shipped by Snowcom Float, uh, which is majority held by the Russian government. Uh, anyway, I, maybe I am a... Anyway, but China and India are not shying away from Russian crude. Yes, in India, cheap Russian crude oil is attracting India's price-sensitive buyers to the point that Russia became the fourth largest supplier of oil to India last month. Okay, so right now, so we have this story and, and maybe Russia is shipping, is, is Russia shipping crude oil to the U.S. refineries, or are they not? I honestly don't know. I thought, I, I have been under the impression that Russia was not shipping crude oil to U.S. refineries. And this is the reason that, the, that I spent $88.24 on a gallon of gas today. Uh, so, next to that story... Asian gasoline exports 
to U.S. SOAR. Asian refineries are shipping growing volumes of gasoline to the United States as demand soars. Yes, Bloomberg reported, noting that exports of the fuels to the U.S. has increased most substantially from Indian refiners. Yes, um, this is one of these oil analysts. Quote, the tightness in the Atlantic Basin, especially in the U.S., should continue to see Asian gasoline barrels pulled west. This will mainly come from India, with several major refineries in the country postponing their planned maintenance. Um, in March, India's gasoline export soared to the highest in five years. Uh, meanwhile, India is gobbling up discounted Russian crude. Russian crude, be Russia became the fourth largest supplier of crude to India refiners with expectations of further increases in the amount of crude that Russian sellers will ship to Indian refiners. So, it sounds to me like India is gobbling up, that was their term, gobbling up discounted Russian crude and their refineries are making gasoline and then India is taking the gasoline made from Russian oil, putting it on these giant tankers and sending the gasoline to the U.S. to sell for $4.69 a gallon. And uh, you think it could not get any stranger. All right. Uh, we'll save. Okay. But what is the real reason gasoline and diesel prices are so high? This is a real brain teaser. Fuel prices have crept higher and higher this year, but the cause is quickly becoming a finger-pointing contest with no real winner. You know, is, is it Vladimir Putin's fault that gas is now $6 a gallon in California? And by all expectations, we were probably heading to a national average of $6 for a gallon of gasoline and $10 for a gallon of diesel. My guess is in about two months from now, uh, the, the national average will be six bucks. Uh, so is it Vladimir Putin's fault? Is it those uh, greedy oil companies? Is it the filling station owners? I think that mercury might be in retrograde. All right. Here we go. But for those of you not understanding this, rising demand and dwindling supply. Rising demand and dwindling sur supply are the true force behind the increase in gasoline and diesel prices. This is a supply and demand. As demand is going up, supply is falling, which leads us uh, to this next story. Analysts warn of a fuel shortage crisis in the U.S. Um, very low inventories of oil products in the U.S. and a shortage of refining capacity have laid the foundations for an oil shortage crisis in the U.S. this summer. This is according to Paul Sankey, lead analyst for Sankey Research. <coughs> Quote, 
I just don't think there is... <coughs> I just don't think there is anything the administration can do about it. We'll get back to that in a minute. Sankey said, referring to the fact that a refinery cannot be built in time to ease the gasoline and diesel crunch. Ask about what would happen if an operating refinery were to stop production because of an accident or a hurricane, Sankey said, quote, we are on the verge of a U.S. oil crisis as it is. Obviously, what I am talking about is shortages. We have never seen inventories this low, particularly in the Northeast, meaning good old New York, baby. We have not seen gasoline this low at this time of year in history, close quote. And with the hurricane season approaching, and I'm reading, people are sending me stories uh, that this is going to be that more and more of these hurricane forecasts shaping up that all of these oil refinery states are going to get slammed by a giant hurricane this summer. Everything is lining up for a major hurricane. Uh, with the hurricane season approaching, quote, we might have a crisis this summer. I'm telling you, yes, there is a global shortage, a global shortage of refining capacity, and currently the energy world, quote, is completely insane. The energy world is completely insane with a hurricane bearing down. And uh, as like, when, you know, talking to that guy, that well driller filling up his truck with diesel today, spending between $300 and $350, truckers are facing an existential crisis as fuel prices soar. Yes, soaring diesel prices have pushed many owner-operator drivers to seek the protection of company driving. Yes, good luck. The current fuel pricing climate could last well into 2023, and if the Russia-Ukraine war persists into next year, high fuel prices may be in the forecast for years to come. Yep. Uh, anyway, and these truckers, and you know, anybody, uh, depending on diesel, I was talking earlier about, you know, this fellow who's doing some uh, flood control work uh, here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Uh, telling me that he is thinking he is going to spend $70,000 more this year than he did last year uh, on diesel. Little dog, where have you gotten to? All right, two more, but don't worry. Uh, Joe Biden is coming to the rescue uh, if you have not heard, yes, where is this, uh, gasoline price gouging bill passes the House. The House of Representatives passed the bill designed to stop companies from price gouging when it comes to gasoline. Uh, the bill known as the Consumer, this is, this is the actual name of the bill, the Consumer Fuel Price Gouging Prevention Act, yes, <coughs> passed with a vote of t <coughs> 
217 to 207, no Republicans voted for the bill to protect uh, consumers from price gouging by oil companies. That's a really big surprise. Um, the bill now heads for the Senate, where it is likely to face stiffer resistance as it needs a minimum of 10 Republicans in support of the bill for it to pass. So it's not going to pass. This whole thing, and, I, and I'm sure there's a bunch of crap on the mainstream media about this. It has no chance. Uh, these oil companies are going to keep gouging uh, in, in all of the usual suspects. But it's all about supply and demand. But there is good news for this uh, Airbnb host here in New York, baby. I'm sitting on the uh, deck of my tiny house, my Airbnb tiny house, and uh, wondering if I'm going to make any money this summer. I have exactly one reservation, one Airbnb reservation for the summer so far. But according to oilprice.com, and I think my buddy will agree, He's already uh, agreed with this. Soaring gasoline prices will not stop summer travel. Gas Buddy released its annual summer travel survey today, suggesting that the percentage of Americans planning on road trips this summer has increased over last year, indicating that crude oil demand destruction, at least from the transportation sector, is not on the horizon, even at today's high gasoline prices. According to the survey results, 58% of Americans plan on road tripping this summer. That is an increase over last summer when gasoline prices were $1.50 less per gallon um, but of course the study also two-thirds of the respondents did say they had yet to confirm their travel plans with 38 percent reporting that inflation is adding difficulty in planning summer travel um, Higher gasoline prices have affected the summer travel plans of 70% of the respondents, a 24% increase over last year, and 65% of those polled are taking just one or two road trips this summer. Memorial Day weekend is the most popular travel weekend. 47% going to hit the road uh, Memorial Day weekend, but you see a big drop. 33% uh, for the 4th of July and 31% planning to take a Labor Day vacation. Uh, this is... Uh, Patrick DeHaan, head of petroleum analyst for Gas Buddy, against a backdrop of gas prices that have continued to set new records ahead of Memorial Day, Americans have been resilient in their desire to hit the road, but we are certainly seeing increased hesitancy due to rising prices at the pump, soaring inflation has led to uncertainty over rising cost. Uh, the national average price of a gallon of gasoline rose to $4.59 today, another new record high 
and 17 cents per gallon increase from one week ago. And there you go. So I guess I am 20 cents above the national average. Oh, anyway, guys. Uh, and that's my guess. I, mean, I have my tiny house rented out for Memorial Day, but uh, I don't have uh, any idea how much business I'm going to have here this summer. M my guess is a, a fraction of what I had last summer. There, there is no way, especially if by the 4th of July, uh, gas has gone up from 450 to $6 a gallon people are going while they still can they're going to get out next weekend and uh, for Memorial Day and uh, then they're going to come back and uh, dig their heels in so anyway uh, come see me at Bugs in a Jar Farm if you have somewhere between four dollars and fifty nine cents and ten dollars a gallon my look, come see me at my little tiny house. Sancho! My little dog has run off, taking advantage of me over here gabbing. Nope, the little dog's right here. Get out there and enjoy your road tripping while you still can. Make a road trip to paradise. Come see me. Bye, guys.